Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this video clip I want to show you how you can very easily dis uh, determine the dissociation constant Ki for an uncompetitive inhibitor. Very often when we try to determine inhibitor dissociation constants uh, we start off with an experiment where we uh, have a given substrate concentration and we measure the rate. So here, this is without our inhibitor. So here we have different substrate concentrations and we measure the corresponding rates. And then uh, what we do is we uh, add some inhibitor. We have, again, substrate concentrations. We measure the corresponding rates like that. We do this experiment again with more inhibitor, uh, substrate concentration, uh, measure the rates, and even more inhibitor, and so on and so forth. And <clears throat> what we get then uh, when we plot these data... Now, obviously, this only works when we have this whole data set, so when we have uh, different S at uh, different inhibitor concentrations and we do our measurements with these things. Uh, but sometimes we don't have that. Sometimes we just use a fixed substrate concentration for all our measurements in the presence of the different inhibitor concentrations. And therefore it's quite difficult then uh, to use these secondary plots because we don't get any Km's uh, apparent or Vmax uh, apparent uh, for these things. We only have a fixed substrate concentration. Uh, for example, in a line weaver berg plot, what we would get with an uncompetitive inhibitor, so line weaver berg plot or double reciprocal plot, 1 over V versus 1 over S here, uh, what we would get is a line like that, that is without the inhibitor, and we would get parallel lines uh, when we increase the inhibitor concentration. And uh, what we get here, so uh, for increasing inhibitor concentrations, these points here, they are 1 over Vmax. So this would be probably without the inhibitor, with more, with, with these different inhibitor concentrations here. And we would get uh, these, uh, these data. And uh, in order then to uh, get the um, get the inhibitor concentration uh, dissociation constant, uh, we would plot a second plot, also called a Dixon plot. And in the case of an uncompetitive inhibitor, we would plot the inhibitor concentration on the x-axis, and we would plot one over v max apparent on the y-axis, so these are here all our Vmaxes apparent here, and we would get a straight line, and this uh, intersect here gives the minus Ki for the uncompetitive inhibitor. But it's actually not such a huge problem, so what we do is we have a fixed substrate concentration, and this always has to be the same concentration. So what we can do is we can measure, uh, we have S here, we measure the rate. And then we add inhibitor to this particular substrate concentration and we get an observed rate. And we add more inhibitor and we get another observed rate and so on and so forth. What is important is that we have um, a rate without the inhibitor, this one here, and all the other observed rates. So what we can do actually is we can make a table 
and where we have uh, inhibitor concentration and our rates. So here, it's important that we have zero here and we measure the corresponding rates. And what we can do now is we can use this data uh, to come up with a different kind of plot. I don't know whether it has a name, uh, so you can name it whatever you want. But in this case, uh, we, for an uncompetitive uh, inhibitor, uh, if we plot V, that's without inhibitor, minus V observed over V observed, equals the substrate concentration at which we do it, so that's our fixed substrate concentration, divided by this substrate concentration plus the Km, and that is the Km without the inhibitor, times 1 over Ki times the inhibitor concentration. And what you see here is that this, in principle, is the equation for a straight line. So this is y equals mx. And this particular term here, that would be the gradient for our um, graph here. And the interesting thing is, and the nice thing is, we have the ki in this gradient. So we know the substrate concentration. We also know our Km because we get this from our graph without the, uh, without the inhibitor. So that's our first graph when we determine the enzyme parameters. So how does that look like? Now here I have my uh, inhibitor concentrations and here I have my rates. And the first rate, that is the rate without the inhibitor, so that's my V, and all the others are the uh, V observed. So what I do is now just simply uh, calculate in a different column, and you can do that with a spreadsheet, with Excel or whatever you want, I just simply calculate uh, V minus V observed divided by V observed. So if you, for example, take this one here, uh, we would have 0 0.045 minus 0 0.036 divided by 0 0.036. And you do that for all the data here. Now, once you've done that, you should get a data set like this. So here you've got your inhibitor concentration and here you've got what you plot on the y-axis. And now all you need to do is plot this column on the x-axis and this on the y-axis and you will get something like that. So what's really nice about this kind of plot is that you just simply do all your inhibitor measurements, your rate measurements, in the presence of a fixed substrate concentration. And this is important. You have to use the same substrate concentration all the time. You have to determine uh, your rate without an inhibitor. That's this one, because that goes into the calculation here. But the really good thing is that you do everything here in in, in the original units in OD per minute. Uh, and you don't have to convert that into millimolar per minute or something like that. You can do everything as OD per minute. And this makes it really nice uh, to, to determine this um, uh, Ki in this case. And what you see is that uh, you get uh, more or less a good straight line. The straight line should, in theory, go through the uh, origin. And we are not too far off here. And what we get also is this gradient here. And that is exactly what we want. Because now we can calculate from this gradient what our Ki is. So we said uh, for this uh, gradient, so m equals 0 0.1302 or 0 0.13 equals s divided by s plus km 
times 1 over ki. And we know our s and we know our km. In this particular example, I think s was a 7.48 millimolar and km was, I think we determined that, to 18.84 millimolar and that is uh, obviously a specific for the enzyme this km and under which conditions you do that but what we get is uh, if we do this calculation s divided by s plus km we get 0 0.284 divided by ki so all we need to do now is solve this for ki well, the unit is the same as our inhibitor concentration here, so the unit in this case would be um, with this kind uh, of plot. Now, just uh, uh, one more thing. Uh, please note that in this case here, this doesn't have a unit. Uh, because the units actually cancel each other out. And that's why we can do it with the OD per minute, because the OD per minute uh, don't impact in, in, in any way on uh, what we are doing here. So I hope this makes sense and uh, it helps a little bit. And thank you very much for watching. So Ki okay, is uh, 0 0.284 divided by 0 0.13, and that gives us 2.18. So what's the unit for this? The unit in this case would be millimolar, and that is our Ki for that.